Good morning. Welcome on this Lord's Day. It is good to have you with us. As we gather in worship this morning, we do have a few announcements. First, a reminder to read your FYI and bring that home with you as there are things worth remembering throughout the week. Um, a few announcements for this week. Uh, first, after the 11 o'clock service today, we are um, baking communion bread. And so if anyone is able to help with that, we encourage you to come back at about 12.15. It doesn't take too long, um, but we do... Uh, the more help we have, the easier it is. So um, if you're able to help, that's greatly appreciated. Also coming up this week, uh, we have a council meeting on Thursday at 7. Um, and then next weekend, Saturday at 9 a.m., we have our Thanksgiving food basket sorting. And Sunday at 10, they're just beginning to assemble and distribute those baskets. Um, next Sunday, we also have confirmation youth dinner and youth group. Um, for the baskets, we're still looking for several items, especially perishable items. We encourage you to take a look at uh, the table in the narthex, uh, where you can sign up to bring some of those items in. Um, we need them at the latest by 10 a.m. next Sunday. All right. Um, a couple special announcements. Um, first, on behalf of the Director of Music Search Committee, um, I'm delighted to share that we have hired a new director of music. Um, yeah. Uh, at the moment, I can't share his name uh, while he still notifies his current employment, um, but we will be able to share that with you soon. He will be begin uh, here on January 1st, and his first services will be January 6th and 7th. Um, so we look forward to greeting him and look forward to um, this new, be new beginning for our congregation. Um, and then on the other side of things, um, I know there have been questions around uh, the church's legal situation and especially what that means for giving. 
Um, so especially as we hire a new director of music, um, your giving is greatly appreciated. Um, it's also vitally important. Uh, in order to continue our ministries as usual, the church must be solvent. Um, so we have to show that we can meet our expenses and pay our bills as normal. Um, and so remember that as we file for bankruptcy, it's simply a restructuring or a reorganization of our bills. Um, and so it's, it's not the same big scary word that you hear necessarily um, out in uh, the corporate world. Um, it's only a preventative measure and it's a measure for the church's protection. Um, so again, our ministries here continue as usual. There will be very little change to how St. Paul's functions. Um, and so although it can be stressful, um, we do move forward with hope and um, with faith. So I'm thankful for your continued support of St. Paul's, for your generosity, your prayers, your participation. Um, we trust that as we move forward as a church, the Holy Spirit is continuing to be at work in our midst. All right. Um, and then a couple other announcements. Uh, we are preparing for our Thanksgiving Eve service, which is Wednesday, November 22nd at 7 p.m. Um, also, we, have, we continue our Christmas gift card sales. There are forms for those available in the Narthex. Um, our next order date is tomorrow, so if you have forms that you want to get in early, um, I encourage you to do so today so that those orders can be placed and the gift cards will come in early. We do have one more order date on December 4th, um, so it's still not too late. Um, all right, we also have our giving tree set up in the Narthex, um, and there's also a wish list um, online, and there's a website for you to visit um, in the FYI as well. Uh, the gifts will benefit children at Falwell School in Mount Holly. Um, and so on the tree in the Narthex are uh, requests for gift cards for um, grocery stores and places where they can get help providing their Christmas meal. And then there are gifts available um, on the Sign Up Genius uh, website on, uh, that's available in the FYI. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you can see uh, Lori Macri and Sandy Sambucci, um, or you can also contact Roseanne or I in the office. We ask that if you have decorations out in the cemetery, any seasonal decorations be removed by uh, December 2nd. Um, and then also we'll hear a little bit more later, um, but save the date for our fall cleanup day, which is also on December 2nd at 9 a.m. All right. Um, and finally, a reminder that it's time to order your poinsettias for Christmas. We're asking that all those orders be placed by November 22nd. Um, so just make a note of that as well. I believe that concludes our announcements, and so now I invite you to please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. I invite the children to come forward, and I invite Miss Louise to come forward to share our children's time. How are you? I don't know. So did you notice it's fall out? What happens? The leaves fall down. Do they make a mess? And different colors, yeah. Piles of them, and then what do you do with the pile? Well, what's the next holiday coming up? Thanksgiving. What do you do on Thanksgiving? A lot of eating going on. What else? And more leaves fall down. That means we have to pick them up, doesn't it? Yeah. So how many people have company over Thanksgiving? Yeah. What, so, so if company comes to your house, what do you have to do? Besides get the turkey. What else? A clean house? Yeah. Well, you have to put everything away. So you might have to rake, you might have to pick up sticks, clean up the room. Did you ever step on a Lego? <laughs> Not a fun thing. It hurts a lot. So if somebody's coming to your house, you want to make sure what happens to the Legos. Clean them up, put them away, put them in the closet, make sure everything's safe, right? Okay. Well, we're doing something here at St. Paul's that helps keep us safe and helps make everything look nice. It's called cleanup day. And when, and when you go out there, you'll see a big sign with leaves on it, an owl, and that's our reminder. And the adults and teenagers can sign to help clean us. Sam has helped us in the past. It may not be your time yet for leaf blowers, okay? But eventually, you'll be able to help us rake and pick up sticks, things like that. But I wanted you to know what was happening. We're picking things up, making it safe, and making it look nice for everybody who comes to visit us. Now, where's the scripture about cleanup? Well, scripture is in the Bible, okay? And I really tried to figure out, how do I tie up cleanup? with a Bible story. And then I remembered the Ten Commandments, and Jesus was with some people. And they said, Jesus, what's the most important number one commandment? And Jesus knew. Love God and love people. That covers everything. Jesus was so smart. So when we take care of our house of worship, that's what this is, we're, point up, loving God. And everyone who comes to worship with us, we've made it a safe place by cleaning up. And we've also shared our time together, like when we have fellowship, okay? So now you know what's going on. It's going to happen December 2nd. By then, all the leaves will be down, and I have an envelope with some little reminders you can take home with you. Remember the owl? Did you see the owl in any of the bulletins? That's our cleanup owl. Miss Roseanne made that for us with the rake to remind us. Can you pass those down? And you can take those reminders home with you for mom and dad or teenagers you know that come here, because all are welcome to help out. We have something for everyone. Breaks, pick up sticks, 
and then our adult people who have tools, they'll help us trim out the bushes, cut down some trees. I know, it's a, and it, yeah, it happens on a Saturday morning. So you have something to look forward to. See if you can, uh, okay. Well, it's a lot of things, and we do it again in the spring, okay? So I like to keep everything cleaned up. Let's pray. Dear Father God, thank you for this beautiful fall day. Help us as we prepare for our exciting holidays, especially Thanksgiving, we give thanks to you. Help watch out for all of our workers and helpers on our cleanup day, and help us to help each other just like Jesus told us to do. And we pray in his name. Amen. Thank you so much. Check out the um, sign-up sheet. Ask moms and dads if they want to sign up, okay? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading for this Sunday, the 24th Sunday after Pentecost, is from the fifth chapter of Amos. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Word of life, word of God. God. Let us recite responsibly Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confounded. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortunes draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me, turn back because of their shame. Let all seek you and rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not tarry. The second reading for today comes from the fourth chapter of the first epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the arch archangel call, and the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, 
will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Please pray with me. God of all creation, you have made this whole world good. Grant that we, your beloved children, would be good stewards of your creation. Inspire in us a spirit of justice and compassion, and lead us in your ways of peace. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. This parable of the bridesmaids has often been used to talk about the end of the world and about making sure you're completely prepared for Christ's final coming. In many churches, in fact, you might hear preachers using this reading to tell you to prepare yourselves for the end of time, encouraging you to sell your possessions, keep your lamps lit, and keep awake to wait for Christ, the bridegroom. However, this is a very self-centered view of this gospel passage, making sure that we've done everything we need to in order to prepare ourselves, but showing no care or concern for those around us. And of course, that view doesn't come out of nowhere. This is exactly what the bridesmaids did in today's gospel reading. The bridesmaids who had brought additional oil for their lamps took care of only themselves and they refused to help those in need around them. And in truth, this image is also maybe what some churches ha have become in countless places today. In many places, churches now exist simply for themselves, concerned only about their own well-being and the desires of their own members, and they fail to see the needs of their community around them. These churches ensure that they have everything they need to keep their own lamps lit and sustain their own community, but they've lost sight of what it means to be Christians in the midst of a world in need. This is the very definition of sin. Sin is about being curved in on oneself, being concerned only with yourself and your own needs. And of course, this definition can apply to churches as well. So if we as a church become concerned only with our own needs, 
and fail to tend to the needs of those around us, or even worse, if we refuse to even care for one another within this community, then we have fallen into sin. We have become curved in on ourselves, and we need to be reoriented outward to see the needs of others. But there's more going on in this gospel passage than simply a question of how to make sure that we're constantly prepared and ready for the coming of Christ. This phrase, keep awake, doesn't simply imply that people of faith should never, ever sleep as they wait for Christ to come. It doesn't mean we should stand vigil throughout the ages, keeping our eyes pried open with toothpicks, waiting for Christ's return. In fact, all of the bridesmaids, wise and foolish alike, are asleep when the bridegroom's approach is announced. No one managed to keep awake. And the bridesmaids were waiting for a long time. The bridegroom seemed to arrive significantly later than everyone expected. And so this parable invites us to consider how the bridesmaids waited and what that waiting looked like. And in truth, the original hearers of this parable would have been waiting for Jesus' return, probably for 40 years or more. It wasn't uncommon for early Christian communities to believe that Jesus would return within their lifetime. Not only that, but they likely felt as though they needed Jesus now more than ever. The church had spread in the years since Jesus' death and resurrection, but it had also been oppressed. The temple had been destroyed, wreaking havoc on Jewish and Christian communities alike. And those who would have been first to hear Matthew's gospel would have been struggling with this very pressing question, where is Jesus? For them, waiting was one of the hardest parts. And waiting is a universal human experience, and it's almost always the hardest part. So we've worked hard to create a world where almost anything we'd ever want to know is, complete, is immediately available at our fingertips. And anything we'd ever want to have is immediately available in a store somewhere, as long as we're willing to pay the price. You can even get same-day shipping if you're early enough. And when it comes to holidays, our world can't even wait until Advent to start preparing for Christmas. We're simply not accustomed to waiting all that often. Yet we've all waited for both good and troublesome things throughout our lives. There are some who are waiting for Thanksgiving. Most children eagerly wait for their birthdays. Many of us have also experienced waiting for college admission letters, waiting to close on a house, or waiting to buy a new car. This kind of waiting for good things brings excitement and anticipation. But on the other hand, there is waiting for difficult news or waiting on difficult times that take on a different character. Perhaps you're waiting for news from a doctor or waiting for a family member to return from active duty in the military. Maybe you're waiting as pink slips are handed out throughout your office. This kind of waiting brings concern, fear, and anxiety. And whether you're waiting for something good or bad, when the anticipated arrival is delayed, it almost certainly causes more anxiety and concern. Why haven't I heard from the college admissions office? When will we hear from the doctor? Why hasn't Jesus returned yet? This waiting is so challenging. And in this concern and waiting, we try to prepare ourselves for what is to come, just as people in Matthew's community tried to prepare themselves for Christ's return. And in each case, this gospel passage seems to have something to say to us about how we are called to wait and how we are called to act. On the one hand, we can prepare ourselves in a self-centered way, by keeping to ourselves, relying on only our own abilities to get through whatever waiting we might be experiencing. We can sit there anxiously waiting by the phone. We can pace back and forth. 
we can let our minds run in circles and assume the worst. We can prepare ourselves with extra oil for our lamps, enough to hold us over for whatever might come our way. We can hoard everything that we might possibly need. And we can wait all by ourselves and prepare all on our own. On the other hand, God has provided a community for us within the body of Christ so that when we wait, we don't have to do it alone. It's our job as the body of Christ to care for those who are waiting, to walk with one another through the joys and sorrows of this world. A family member or friend might reach out to us as we're waiting to provide comfort and support along the way. So we're not called to be curved in on ourselves like the bridesmaids seem to be in today's parable. Instead, we're called to bear one another's burdens, to provide for one another and for all those in need. So perhaps a more modern version of this parable would go something like this. As a teenager, my husband's family was stuck just north of the Tappan Zee Bridge on the night of the great New York City blackout. Their car was low on fuel, and they were waiting at a rest stop because they didn't know how far into New Jersey it would get them. Of course, fuel pumps require electricity to work, and they weren't sure if they could get far enough to reach, reach a gas station with power. So over the course of their waiting, they got to know some of the other travelers who were in similar situations. One man who was from North Jersey was happy to talk and pass the time with my husband's parents. They didn't know it at the time, but he had used his cell phone to call family who were only a few miles south of the bridge. Real trolls, he called them when they arrived. These trolls came with five gallons of gas, literal fuel. And this man was happy to share some of that fuel with Mason's family. So it got both of them across the bridge and to a gas station where both cars could fill up for the rest of the journey. Beloved siblings, this is how we are called to wait for our Savior. We are called to wait in community. We wait with care and compassion sharing what we have to ease life's burdens. This is what it means to wait for Jesus, to look out for, for each other and not just ourselves. Our reading from Amos today concludes, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. God calls us as the body of Christ to work together for justice for all those who, need, who are in need, so that justice can flow out from this community like a stream throughout our nation and throughout our world. We are called to live not just for ourselves, but instead we're called to live for the sake of those all around us, for those who are hungry, those who are homeless, those who are poor, those who are sick or suffering, those who need a listening ear. God has created a community for us so that we can care for one another and work for justice throughout the world as we anticipate Christ's return and the fulfillment of God's promise of abundant and eternal life. Thanks be to God. Hey, hey. 
gathered now with all the people of God in Christ Jesus, we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for, for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Congregation may kneel or sit as needed. O oh God, for whom we wait, come quickly to your people. Bring your salvation and center us in hope found only in you. Deepen our faith in meaningful worship and send us out with your justice and truth. Hear us, O God. O oh God, for whom we watch, we glimpse your power in rushing water and your beauty in the darkening night. Restore this creation and provide clean water to all people and animals. Save us from foolish, wasteful living. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, for whom we long, let justice roll down like waters on all nations. Bless citizens with wise leaders. Save your children from war. Especially on this Veterans Day weekend, we pray for the veterans of this community, that they are supported and loved. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God, in whom we hope, we pray for all who are in need. Provide for those who experience homelessness or hunger. Support the under or under underemployed and comfort any who are suffering this day, especially Roger, Greg, Mary, Robert, Dennis, Roberta, Donna, Stephen, Brenda, Nancy, Marge, Walt, Linda, Vera, Michelle, Joan, Julia, Marie, Marilyn, Gretchen, and Grace, and all we now name either silently or aloud. Hear us, O God. O God, for whom we listen, inspire the music industry of our music, music ministry of our creation. <clears throat> Guide us in the this time of transition. Fill our worship with songs to proclaim your greatness. Help us to sing and dance with joy and tell boldly of your salvation. Hear us, O God. O God, in whom we remain, we remember our loved ones who have died and now live in you. Bring comfort and assurance of new life to all who grieve. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace.
He's our rescuer, he's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound, oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. There is good news for the captives, good news for the shamed. There is good news for the one who walked away. There is good news for the doubter, the one religion failed. For the good Lord has come to see and save. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forever. Please stand. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather the gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, 
with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. You may be seated. Communion this morning will be celebrated at the rail. Both sides are invited to come forward at the same time. And if you prefer to remain in your pew for safety or mobility reasons, or if you're worshiping on the live stream, I'll lead you in communion following the rest of the distribution.
forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Now, for those worshiping in their pew or on the live stream, this is the body of Christ given for you. 
and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand. And now the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. And now may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior, and spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, 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 yes, L
And now, beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am pressed, but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise with the door that his joy is going to be. 